Good morning, my outstanding friends. This is going to be very interesting, and it's going to be kind of, I'm sure it's going to be very controversial, because I'm going to be talking about why people have become so nasty and so polarized, and vicious attacks. I mean, it's, it's, and it's really, it's, it's hard to believe that people are not interested in understanding they have an opinion or well I, i'm not talking about everybody see this is where i go wrong i say everyone we're talking about everybody no i'm not talking about everyone i'm talking about the ones you see you know the ones i'm talking about they just react over and over and over uh, nasty responses with no thought whatsoever because i get like 10 hits in a row come down with Biddy's big smiley face you're an idiot type of face that um you know everything i post right down the line so you know they're not looking at them it's within one minute they're hitting five or six of my posts you know somebody to catching up with me that just thinks i'm an idiot and i understand that i do understand the things i say make me seem like i'm crazy but i never ever ever come without evidence I come with specimens, I come with DNA and CAT scans and history and documentation, chemistry, physics, experiments. I don't come making statements that I cannot support. If I cannot support it, I don't make the statement. I can't support it. But I can support all kinds of things that are so controversial that the average mind is just... It just it's such a, a, a complete upheaval of everything that we have thought we understood. Because everything we thought we understood is literally completely wrong. And this is where it's going to go, oh, you guys, growl, oh, what an arrogant guy. You know, I'm just telling you, show me something that's right. Let's talk about history. You think history is right? If the things I'm showing are right, history is completely, totally, totally wrong. And I'm showing the things that I can support by giants and dragons and, you know, all of these mud fossils. And, and, and now they agree now that, yeah, they, these things are real. But they're saying, oh, that happened 500 million years ago. No, it didn't. Velikowski did the research. And every single one of my things that I found is on the surface of the earth. It's not buried 100 feet deep, 200 feet deep, which it obviously would be over the course of millions of years. This was 3,500 years ago. It was all of the events that created all of the mud fossils I'm talking about. And it is such an overwhelming shock to ev all the educated people, they, they've gone into what I call PhDolia. They call me paradiolia. I, I, I see things that aren't really there. I make things up. No, I see the things that are there. Then I support the claims that I make. They dismiss everything unless it fits with their peer review. In other words, everybody has to agree. Otherwise, they're not going to accept it. And I'm telling you, this is none of them can speak up or they become a, not a peer anymore. So they're just gone. So you have to say what they tell you to say or you're out of the picture. You know, stay on the page or get off the stage. That's how it works. Stay on the page or get the hell off the stage. We don't want to hear from you unless you say exactly what we tell you to say. And then you force that into your students. So we have a never-ending, perpetuating denial of reality to stay alive. You're not going to go to college and go to all these fancy universities and tell them, oh, you're wrong, I'm right, because I'm going to tell you right now, they'll keep your money and they'll tell everybody you're an idiot. So you cannot stand up for yourself. We, this is the place we're at right now. But people have become very nasty because of this upheaval of their you know, their status quo. They were just floating at the top of the food chain because they had 
gone to be indoctrinated. Basically, that's what it boils down to. School is indoctrination. It's not learning anymore. If you don't repeat what you're told, you're done. And what you're told is just not right. Like I said, history, that's wrong. Fossilization, all the preservation, the giants, the dragons, all that stuff is true. The mythology is correct. What we, the, the age of enlightenment, is the lights went out. These people knew what they were talking about. They weren't writing just silly little stories to scare kids. They were writing things that had substance. And Velikovsky, again, my hero, went through the entire world and collected all the stories, all the documentation, all the carvings, all the statues, all the monuments, all the cultural center, histories, the libraries, the museums, all the people that were involved in preserving the history, not just dismissing it. And now we've come to a dismissal society, and a, dis a dismissal world, really. There are pockets of people that are still heavily invested in these ancient texts and, and trying to preserve these things. But it's become so convoluted now that you really can't believe anything. I mean, everybody's had a slant to it going down through history. And this started about, yeah, let's say 1000 BC, somewhere around there. 800 BC was when Hesiod wrote all the things that were supposedly the history from the Greek gods down. And all that stuff, as far as I can determine, it's all valid. It has some validity at least. And it has to be re-examined because it's been considered just absolute nonsense total nonsense and and that's why when you present it as factual it's it's just an immediate dismissal boom the mind goes off idiot 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 idiot, idiot. and uh, it's just like uh, psst, the veil comes down and the case is closed this is what I've run into for 15 years and it hasn't got, it's gotten better because when I was when I started, it was me against the rest of the world. I mean, a hundred percent. Because even still, the people that have made some outrageous claims, they, they don't even get close <laughs> to the outrageous claims I make. But I have the evidence. I have the evidence. It's not. There's nothing here that's not supportable. But you have to look at it, and then you have to be able to step outside your your comfort zone and say, all right, I know I'm going to get attacked, because you will. But if you don't step outside your comfort zone, you're just living in a fantasy world. And that's 100% now, as far as I'm concerned, that are educated and, and academia um, indoctrinated. They're, they're just totally living in a fantasy world, f feeling very impressed with their knowledge and very arrogant against anybody that can speak up to them. And I can speak up to any of them, 100%. Anybody want to talk to me, come on down from academia, 100%. I want physics, I want history, I want chemistry, I want the light research. All of our history, anything, I don't care what it is, because 100%, I mean 100%, I'm not talking about even close to 1% being correct. As you get into certain things, we're building houses and paving roads and you know, chemical stuff, yes, when you're up in the upper end of chemistry, but in the subatomic realm, forget about it, I have no idea, totally gone. And light slows down coming to us, so the universe is not necessarily expanding. Light just slowing down. Cosmic microwave background is just light to stop going. It's just slowed down so long that it's just sitting around. And, and they know all of this stuff, but they just can't put it together, and they can't speak out about it, because if they do, the funding gets cut off, and their case is closed, their peers will destroy them, their life is ruined. And I did have somebody who was very, very high up in a very, very important profession to tell me I was right, don't use my name, or you'll destroy my life. And that's what, actually what happened was I said, if you agree, can I just point towards you a little bit? I, I forget how I put it, but I didn't want to say, can I use your name and say, so-and-so said I'm right? And he said, please, no. <laughs> what do you want to do, ruin my life?
And that, that's exactly the case. Exactly the case. And, and the ones that have the power are the most vicious and vindictive. And, and they will just push you aside and, and it won't concern them in the slightest. Because they, they feel that it's, it's just up to them to be dominant and profess. And you to be subservient and accept. And go out and tell the same thing to the kids. Even Yale, the professor about quantum, he says, nobody knows anything that we're talking about. So just go when you go back, just tell the kids the same thing and you'll be fine. <laughs> he says, it's good. you know what, I'm going to play it for you because it's funny. I took quantum at Yale University of Geneva. I went to the University of Geneva online and I communicated with them. I showed them all my stuff and they, were, they didn't disagree whatsoever. And if they do, I want to hear from them. Because I, I, they didn't whatsoever. And we went back and forth. And I said, I can see these particles. They said, you can't see them because you'll destroy your CMOS. I said, yes, I can see them because I'm working with light. You guys are working with huge chunks like this. When you break your particles, you smash your CMOS. Yes, absolutely, because you're hitting them with like that. We're hitting them with this. All right, so and I said, plus we focus much into a venturi, so everything crushes. It's a crusher. I said, you guys are trying to hit head on. You can't hardly do it. You got to be so focused that I don't know how you could ever because they, they did bounce off like basketballs with these big fields of magnetism surrounding them. So at any rate, they they ended up agreeing, and they ended up actually. I saw that they they upgraded CERN to use CMOS, which before they said you can't use. Well, what they did was they hardened it. They must have put some kind of filtration units in there that would accept all the big chunks and filter them out before the CMOS picked up the radiated particles, which are these. Because you can, otherwise you're going to destroy the, the, the bonds within the CMOS. The CMOS is complementary metal oxide silicates. Complementary means you're adding different molecules onto them on this silicate substrate to absorb these different frequencies of light. I don't want to get too involved. I, I get too involved. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can't, you can't just buff it off. And that's what's happening now. It's like, oh yeah, we know everything about it. I said, okay, explain to me isotopes. Talk to me about isotopes. Well, uh, it just... Uh, they're just unstable atoms. I said, yeah, exactly. How do they get so many zones of instability and all those half-lifes if all you got is a few quarks floating around in here? I said, well, nobody really understands that. I said, exactly. You're never going to understand it until you start with dipole electron flood theory. And that I was told, eh, I don't want to go down those. This is where I can get nasty too. After 15 years, I can get a little bitter myself. I'm trying not to. Very difficult. But anyway, um, that's my proposition. The people are so <sighs> slapped by all of this new information instantly coming at them. Usually it's a filtering in. And uh, I tried to do that. And I was so attacked that I was destroyed, and and I did become very bitter and withdrawn, and uh, and uh, it was a tough time. And finally, I said, "Well, as I started studying what was written about these things, it, it was it was all laid out right there. Even the teachers, it says it, Jesus said that there'll be false teachers among you, and he will exploit you with tales they have concocted." And if you follow them in their depravity, which is basically what it is, they're saying, don't you talk to me about God, don't talk to me about Jesus Christ, that is all nonsense, you bring it here into my classroom, I will fail you. Now what do you do? It was just like that in Jesus' time, except they nailed them to crosses and they burnt them at the stakes. Well here, what's the difference? They take away your ability to make a living and they destroy everybody's opinion of you by making you out to be an idiot because you stand up for yourself. So anyway, bitterness and nastiness 
is not the way. Questioning, searching, that is the way, my friends. And the only thing I can do is to withdraw from the extremely negative people. I will make an attempt to interact, you know, civilly, where we can discuss back and forth. But that is just not, doesn't happen. And I, this was something fabulous that happened to me. Now, I'm going to show you something right here. This is a group that actually contacted me and said, we'd like you to be in the group, and then we want you to be a group expert because you've been talking about all these things. And I said, wow, that's just amazing. Because <laughs> usually I they won't let me in the group, first of all. And when, as soon as I do post the first couple of times, there's so many hits against me that they just block me and they say, well, you know, this guy's causing too much trouble here. So, the uh, same thing happened there. They just, and they just slap me, and they're just doing the same thing over and over. So, I, somebody posted, why are these people being so rude and nasty? And I put a note in there, yes, a lot of obnoxious people here, which there are. But that's just everywhere. I, that's not just there. It's, it's a reaction to what I present. It's a reaction. It's not that they're just nasty. You know, these probably are very nice people. But it, when you get to a point of, um, it's like one woman put it. She said, the stuff you present is, is amazing, but it is jarring. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Jarring. Yeah, yeah, it's jarring, all right. It's, it's going to change everything. Plus, it takes it, it changes a lot of people's opinion about even their religious inclinations and how they felt about eternity and so forth. And especially the ones that are not religious. And I present all this stuff showing that that stuff you can't deny it anymore. <laughs> and you know, and but I'm not going to fight them. If they want to deny it, deny it. That's okay. I can live with that. I cannot live with discussing people saying everything we see in space isn't there, there's no space station, the earth is not spinning, everything's computer generated graphics, it's all lies, we've never been off the earth, you know, I mean it goes on and on and on. I can't, you know, and I don't want to be mean to those people, I don't want to be nasty, I don't want to insult them, but if you deny reality, I don't want to be around that. And that really ruined my research in the beginning because that's all that wanted to be attached to me was people that were saying the earth is flat. I, I never heard anybody say it realistically thinking it was true until I presented the giants and they said, well, Roger found the giants. That means the earth is flat. I said, what? Where did that come from? And I know where it came from. It came from the university system because I, I, you know, at first, Everything blew up like I couldn't believe how many people were getting jumping on a bandwagon. And then the next thing I knew, I was destroyed by the university system. The guy thinks the earth is flat and he's this and that and that. And, that. and then it just, and that was it. And then I became pretty bitter. And uh, of course, everybody in my family and everybody that I knew thought I was crazy. And they still basically, once they back off, they don't normally come back back around. <laughs> So anyway, um, it's, a, it's a hard road to walk down if you want to walk down truth, which is a, very, a path rarely traveled, because it is, it's a tough road <laughs> to continue down. You can get a little ways down there, and then it gets pretty hard, and then it gets harder, and then it gets much harder, and then eventually it's just keep walking <laughs> it, 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 it gets to a point where you just realize this is just the way it is it's just the way it is I never in the, my wildest dreams thought I would meet this kind of resistance having all the evidence I had the CAT scans the DNA the specimens the documentation you can see the things from space to earth you can see all these things I'm showing you can see Quetzalcoatl you can see Typhon you can see all these things and they're, even on Mars, the same thing on Mars. I show all of the biology that's on Mars. I've shown this to NASA. I've shown it to everybody. And it's just a standoff. There are no responses 
other than the first response is, oh, that's crazy, or no response. Well, mostly it's no response at all. Because once they start, they know they're in a, in a, a losing proposition. You can't, can't fight me. Once I get you in, you know, a conversation, I will win. So if you want to be in that conversation, prepare to lose. <laughs> but that's okay. That's what science is. Maybe I'll lose. Maybe you say, Roger, you're crazy because here's here, here, here. I don't want to hear. Well, I, I, you know what I hear? I hear, I said, they can't be that big because the heart can't pump the blood that high. I said, who the hell told you that? Where did you hear this? Oh, well, we're, everybody knows that. <laughs> And that's what I hear all the time. Everybody knows that. We all know the universe is expanding. I said, hell no. Nobody knows that whatsoever. The universe of the light is slowing down. I know that for a fact. And I know we can speed the light up because I can show these things. And they dismiss that. Oh, the universe is expanding. Now it's expanding so fast that it's accelerating faster than the speed of light. You know why? Because we can see further now. So we're seeing where the light began bazillion years ago, or not, not even, I don't know how long ago it was, but I can tell you what, it didn't st start way out there and come the same speed all the way to here. It came down at speed, and it stops. And now what is it? It's the cosmic microwave background radiation. It just sits out there. And as all the other light comes through the universe, that's supposed to be staying the same speed. No, it goes bang, 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 bang. As it hits things, you know, there's, a, there's a big spaces between them. I'm not, you know, not gigantic spaces, but there's spaces. Um, I don't know how far apart each particle is, in the, but there's light coming to us. It's just, it saturates and they're particles. So it's going to get bounced into as it comes to us slowing down. So we have no idea spending billions and trillions of dollars for this equipment that means nothing because it has, it's doing nothing. It's just saying, yeah, look, they're making up all these stories. And to show the evidence I have about the biology on Mars, you know, they, they, this, nobody is this incompetent to miss what is so obvious. All right, so what is the plan? Do they know this and they worry about these gods coming back? Because gods are gods, they don't die. They're around somewhere. Now, if you go back and read Apollodorus, and I read them all. I wrote Apollodorus, Ovid, Hesiod, you know, the Homer, the Odyssey and the Iliad and all that stuff, all that stuff happened. This is not just silly stories. These were histories. They used to call them the histories. <laughs> we call them poems. He was a poet. No. No, my friends. It's time to reassess everything with a critical thinking scientific eye. And then if that leads you into some religious Epiphany, that's, that's good. That's good. That's great. If it does, if it doesn't, that's good too. But to know and understand what you're looking at rather than be told, oh, this is 10 million years old and this is 500 million years old, they're saying my stuff is. This came right off the surface of the earth and this is a goose. And now they know, yes, they say, oh yeah, they will petrify in this manner, in this conditions, the salty silicate floods. They know all that, but they say, oh, that was 500 million years ago. No, it wasn't. It was 3,500 years ago. Velikovsky did all of this. It was 1500 B.C. And this was the time that the Egyptian cultures were wiped out, and everything just changed. All in one shot. Pew. And Jupiter ejected Venus, and Venus almost hit Earth, and then it smashed into Mars and killed Mars. Literally killed it. Killed everything on Mars, and all of those body parts went into space. They had f fights in the heavens. All of that stuff is written, and it's all out there. And if you stay with me and look at my channel and watch the videos completely with a critical thinking eye and mind, then make your decision. I won't say one way or the other. I'm saying this is my evidence to support my claims. Then the only way that you can rationally respond 
is to examine what I claim. And I'm telling you, it's very interesting. If you're, if you have a thoughtful mind, this is not going to be something that you want to miss, because this is as thoughtful as you can get, backed up by as much science as exists. There is nobody, and I don't care who they are. Like I said, I want somebody, anybody, CERN, Fermilab, Lawrence Livermore, any of the, you know, like I tried with Yale, they, they won't talk to me because I presented all my evidence to them and then they took credit for it, writing a paper about exceptional preservation of soft body creatures. Long after I started to continue to bombard them with all my evidence. So I see academia basically as fraudulent now. And, uh, and that's exactly what it is at this point. For them to miss this and to, 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 to stay away from their obligation to teach and to think and to search, that to me is fraudulent. So anyway, um, what I want to do is try to stay positive. I like you to stay positive. I like you to think. And, and not assault people. Just think about it, because it's because it, it's it's a harsh, it's a harsh, snappy thing that people do to people, and it, it, it's it's abrasive. But anyway, th this would be a great place for you to come. Um, hold on. This is ancient giant trees, oddities, aliens, conspiracies, and giants. And they're, she's nice. She's a very nice person that runs this. And um, like I say, they invited me. And of course, immediately, people are starting to put up these things like this. And they're, they're you know, everybody all this smiley face, nasty little comments. And some people are being nice, but there's a lot of, you know, pareidolia at its finest. And then, and then there's some nice people here, too. Uh, but they realize that things have become very difficult between people. The po polarization of society, and especially in politics, you know, all I, all I want to see is people being, trying to be compassionate and loving and thoughtful. And, and I'm really not a big one to, to preach on that because that was not really my life. I was out for me. But I see the error of my ways more or less. <laughs> you know, you still got to be out for yourself to some degree. It's not like, you know, it, but there are people that are so giving. It's just incredible. Like, my wife is like that. It's just amazing. But she wants nothing to do with my research either. It's just too much of a, too much of a revelation. And not, not, nobody in my family does. I can't talk to anybody in my family. I can't talk to anybody, really. Other than, there's a few people online I discuss things with. But that's, um, they're not, uh, anyway, that's just one of those things. People can take it or they can't take it. And once they push back against it, it's, it's very, very hard to change directions. You know, the people that are just learning about it now, if they s just let their minds be open and think, they'll be fine. People that have withdrawn, they're, as far as I've seen, they don't come back, very rare. I've had some come back and say, you know, you were right, I couldn't believe this. When you just, I thought you were an idiot, and you know, and now it's quite obvious it's true. That's a rarity, that's an exceptional person that can do that. You know, I, I would have thought it was just the opposite. It's not. And the smarter you are, the worse it gets. PhD olia. Can't see what's right in front of their faces. And it's, it's strictly, I see it right now, it's just self-serving and protection of their positions and funding and all that stuff. You know, and that's, that is the way of the world. But if it wasn't, if everybody sort of opened up to this kind of thinking, we could change things. Because they're spending literally trillions of dollars doing all this space research and talking about light and all these telescopes and things. And we could now we want to figure out how long the universe has been here. I'm going to do another one today or tomorrow about the Big Bang. The Big Bang, Big God, Big Misunderstanding. 
big mystery. What is it? Which one of it is it? A big bang? We think that everything is going out away from us and it's pulling the light, stretching it, because it's pulling the light with it. That's the redshift. No, it's just the light is slowing down as it comes to us. It's nothing's being pulled away. Light slows down. This I have proven absolutely 100%. No question whatsoever that's true. And they know it slows down. But they always said space is just a vacuum. It's, if you look out, it's, it's not a vacuum. It's saturated. Okay, so I guess that's enough for right now. Um, this is a group that you might want to come up and join. Ancient giant trees, oddities, aliens, conspiracies, and giants. There's all kinds of stories up here, whatever they're doing. If it interests you, it interests you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But there's a lot of very rude people here, too. If and the things that don't interest them, they just want to insult you, which... That's, as I say, that's what happens. Now, I have some issues with them. I don't think this is true. I'd like to know some, why they're using this, but if there's some evidence that's true, I'd like to see it. Now, ancient trees did not do well in the flood. They did preserve, like this one here. This is a tree. It's a petrified tree, but you see it's turned into agate. That's agate. This is totally different, and the only reason that preserved was because it was in where there's a lot of blood, transition metals. That's the only reason they preserved. Trees have cellulose, they de uh, dissolved in these heavy, salty, hot water flood that created all my mud fossils. Pr um, flesh and blood and collagens. The key is the collagens, which is the... the um, right in this area here, phospholipids. And they boil down to become aluminum silicates, which is the fascia that coats all, it's called um, feldspar. Feldspar coats almost every rock there is. And all that is is a membrane around some kind of a body part, the phospholipid. It boils down to aluminum silicates. Anyway, I will have issues with the things that they're claiming, but I'd like to do it in a respectful way and say, here's why I, I don't agree that that's a tree. It's like Devil's Tower. Ah, oh, it's a tree, it's a tree, it's a tree. I said, well, let me show you why I say it isn't a tree. It doesn't matter. You can't show, the evidence has no meaning to some people whatsoever. Even though, even though, like, the things that I can show with DNA and CAT scans and specimens, everything, it has no effect on anybody that has a, a predetermined position that it's just inflexible. That's, that's just going to happen. That's the way of nature now. But I see it so prevalent now. It's just amazing. The, the number of attacks against anybody that has a difference of opinion. And um, sometimes those, yeah, it gets into a whole ball of wax when you start getting into politics and everything. And religion is what's going to happen to you after you die. People, to, people on both sides of that chasm, or, or you know, it can be all kinds of ways of thinking about it. Some people are just nice. They say, "Well, you have to make up your own mind." And that's what I say: make up your own mind. See what's because none of this has been available to us before. We never knew any of this about giants and dragons. It's, and and the key is there's never been one single culture on the face of this planet that didn't talk about giants and dragons and battles in the heavens and gods and eternity. Not one until we ran into academia. They are the only culture that just says that's all nonsense. Well, you know what I say. I say that academia has become a real problem, an extreme problem in education. It is anti-education. These are poison, it's, they used to call it the Ivy League. I call it the Poison Ivy League. That is where you're going to go to have your mind destroyed. And, and the, the more destruction they can reap on you, the more important you will become in, in this world. But I'm going to tell you what, this world doesn't last forever. Trust me, I'm getting close to, you know, my journey 
to wherever I'm going to go. And there's only two places. That, well, the way I see I don't know what's going to happen. I have no clue. But if you take the ancient texts, which appear to be quite valid, and then you say, well, if that's true, the things they're saying can be really terrible or they can be pretty good. What do you have to do to make them pretty good? What will you have done to make them terrible? And it's all spelled out in these ancient texts. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty obvious you have to be compassionate and good and loving and thoughtful and search and learn. This is a learning experience, this life. This life does not go on forever. This, again, these are my opinions. Now, this will upset people. Yes, probably it will. People think you're just going to die and rot and go wherever you go. And that might be. I can't say it's not. I'm not going to say absolutely 100 way. But I, can, I can't prove it. That I can't prove. But I can see what was written and what I can see is factual. And then when I put the two of them together, it makes sense to me. We're going to have an eternity of some sort. And it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. I'm going to leave it at that. I love you all. Um, yeah, let's try to stay positive. Don't get bitter. Don't get nasty to people. And I'm, I have to take that into my own consideration as well because, you know, I've been, uh, I've been on both sides of this thing. And uh, I just want to be nice as I can be. And sometimes I find it hard. So this is not an easy thing to do, just so everybody be nice and everybody says, okay, we're all going to be nice. No, it's not going to happen that easy. <laughs> it, trust me, it's not going to be that easy. You're going to have to really deal, deal with some hard feelings. And, and then just say, what makes sense? That's all. What makes sense? All right? I love you all.